Zachary Wagner here with uh, Clemson Sports News. I was just wondering how this camp has differed from uh, previous camps before. Oh, man, it's, it's completely different just because of all the protocols that are in place. Uh, you know, meeting spaces are different. Um, dynamics are different in terms of how we operate and move, maneuver around the building. Uh, but structurally, from a football standpoint, you know, practice structure, all of that stuff is very similar. But just all the protocol. Uh, so the guys got to be, you know, they got to be proactive. They got to get up early. You know what I'm saying? They got to make sure that they take care of their business so they can get it, uh, get checked in on a daily basis. Uh, we're traveling a little bit further for some of our team meetings. So just structurally with, uh, with those issues is different because of the protocol. But the football, you know, the football's football. It sounds like you had a number of guys out of receivers today. You know, what did you see from the reserves to step up? Oh, really, really proud of Cornell. I'd say that Cornell Powell probably had his best day, you know, since, he, since he's been here, man. He really, really stepped up. He's having to play, you know, a lot of plays. He's having to play all three positions. Uh, he had several touchdowns today. Uh, him and Trevor, you know, had some good chemistry today, and he just was fighting and battling. Um, you know, he started to get hot towards the end of, uh, end of practice, and so he had a good day. Speck just continues to quietly make plays. He's another one that's being stressed and strained. He's having to play multiple positions, you know. So those are the guys right there that are really stepping up. You know, I thought Braden had, a, had, Braden had a solid day uh, when he got his opportunity. So those are the two main guys. Uh, but hopefully we'll get those other guys back out of protocol soon and uh, get them in action. Hey, Coach, uh, how did it feel to get into Death Valley tonight or uh, this, this morning? Man, it felt awesome. You know, and, and before practice, I told the guys, and this is what you work for, opportunities to play football. Uh, this is your this is your your happy place. Uh, let's block everything out and let's just have some fun. And I thought the guys really really took heart to that. Got off to a fast start. Uh, then the, then the sun came in and and you can see that the summer's been a little bit different on the guys and you know had a couple penalties down the stretch. But overall, man, it was just awesome to get out there and uh, and get off the field and, and see what the young guys can do. And uh, and the offensive line, especially that second offensive line, a bunch of young guys having to play a lot of snaps. You know, Robbie's mixing and matching. You know, trying to get guys in the right position. Uh, so it was just fun. I thought the backs ran hard. Uh, quarterbacks looked good. Uh, did have a couple turnovers, you know, and a couple tip balls. But uh, but other than that, a really good start, a good middle. But uh, but kind of down the stretch, uh, didn't quite finish the way that I wanted them to. Sounds like Lin Jay had a bigger role today. You know, what what did you see out of Lin Jay today? You know, Lin Jay is, is is a lot more confident, and he's playing fast. Uh, he just looks uh, he looks uh, composed uh, in pass protection. Uh, he, he can communicate now with me uh, in my language and pass protection. He can communicate with the quarterbacks. He can anticipate where pressures are. It uh, looks like the game is really, really slowing down for him. Uh, and he's starting to understand and, and, and really internalize what his running style is. You know, I'm seeing him start to drop his pads a little bit more, be a little bit more patient, not always try to hit the home run. But because of that, because of that level swing, I like to say with him sometimes, uh, as a baseball analogy, he is sitting some home runs. So just really, you know, he just looks like a veteran and, and is needed, uh, especially with the young guys that we got, the talented guys in the room. Hey, Coach, this is Chris Hall with AllClemson.com. Tell us yes, a little bit about Pomachon and how he's handling the competition with DJ and Trevor and how he's coming along. He's doing a good job, uh, throwing a lot at him. Uh, really, really kind of went heavy with the install because we had some time this offseason to get ahead. Uh, and they're really, really straining these guys just with the, situ with the schedule being a little bit different uh, and the camp structure not quite being as long as it's been in the past. So really challenging those guys. He looks a lot more comfortable in the, in the pocket. You know, he's not, he's not uh, having issues with the motions like he did in the past. Uh, so he looks a lot more calm there. The biggest thing for him uh, to progress, uh, which, which is understandable and, and probably expected at this point, is just the pass protection and being able to uh, see the multiple fronts, make the multiple, multiple adjustments, get the back in the right spot, know that when he changes the protection, you know, where he's going to be run hot. So that's probably the biggest area of improvement. But, man, you, he's not backing down. He's battling. Uh, he's, he's absorbing as much as he can. Uh, but still got to challenge him to, to, to make sure that he's, you know, really putting in the work from a pass protection standpoint. And that's just like with backs, that's the hardest thing with quarterbacks, too, uh, is to pick up the protection. And when you go against Brent uh, and everything that they do with the multiple fronts and the multiple blitzes and, and the aggressive nature that they have, uh, really, really challenges him. How is, how is DJ handling all of that right now in that same kind of competition? In that same kind of competition? DJ's uh, doing well. You know, I, I think you can see there's probably a little bit uh, more of a foundation there uh, when you look at uh, when you look at him and Trevor and then the systems that they came out of in high school and you compare it to Tyson. A lot of that stuff is new, uh, may not have been responsible for that, but, but DJ is handling it the same way. But you can see it's, it's, a, it's an adjustment period uh, because, again, it's a lot of responsibility. So both of those guys are battling. Uh, they're both moving along, I'd say. I compared uh, DJ to Trevor. 
uh, in that aspect. But I say it's because he's got that foundation, so he's starting to handle that pretty good. So they're both they're both competing, and it's uh, in my opinion like they're up there neck and neck battling. Uh, and today's a good day. Excited to see the tape. Thought our protection was good. Uh, so overall, they must have, have made the right adjustments, uh, the right protection calls, and, and uh, slid the line slid the line the right way, put the back where they needed to be because we uh, we had a really, really good day from a protection standpoint. Sorry if I'm too close to the screen. It's hard to hear on this. Uh... Coach Gavin Oliver from the Clemson Insider. Uh, I was just curious, what, what did you see from uh, Kobe Pace and Demarcus Bowman today today, today here in the scrimmage? You know, finally got a chance to, to, to get off the field and let and let Mar Demarcus and Kobe go. You know, I thought I thought Kobe looked really good between the tackles. You know, like I thought he would. Big physical guy. Uh, did get the edge uh, a time or two. And uh, and Demarcus, you know, I think in in the, in the he's more of a of a scrimmage type of guy. Uh, when we're out there running around in uh, in practice, things are moving a lot faster. But when he kind of is out there on his own, uh, back in his element. Uh, you saw him put his foot in the ground, made a couple of plays, looked good back there, doing some kickoff return stuff for us. So, so we're pleased with where they are. Um, obviously, y'all know uh, every year it's it's always a challenge with them young backs because of the way our system is structured from a protection standpoint, from an alignment standpoint, and just all the multiple uh, route adjustments that we make in the passing game is really a challenge for them. But I was I was encouraged to see those guys, you know, in a first scrimmage. You know, and so I would say both of those guys would would probably be ahead of, of where typical freshmen are, but still got a long way to go. What are you seeing out of the uh, the interior offensive line right now? You got some guys stepping into some bigger roles. You know, have... Can you repeat the question, please? What are you seeing out of the uh, interior offensive line? Some of the guys stepping into new roles. You know, how are they doing so far? You know, so far so good. Um, you know, like I said, we had a really good day from a protection standpoint. Um, and, and again, I think we know you know who Jackson is and uh, with his with his uh, past performance. And I think we all knew the upside that McFadden had. So the question was going to be interior wise, but, you know, Kate has really accepted his opportunity and his role to, to be the leader uh, in the, uh, in the middle, so directing traffic, you know, Bach horse just brings that nasty, nasty element. And then Putnam, Putnam has quietly had a, a really, really good camp. Um, and like I tell those guys, if, if, if your name's not being called and we don't notice you, then you're doing something right. So those guys are, are being challenged with the multiple fronts and, and multiple run schemes that they got to make adjustments on with the multiple fronts. So I'm really pleased with their communication, their chemistry, you know, that first offensive line, they don't have to play a lot of snaps uh, because of the, the youth uh, that we have within the depth on the offensive line. So, you know, really, really been proud of, of just the cohesion, the chemistry, the ownership and the leadership that those guys are, are providing. And then just fundamentally and technically, you know, they're doing a really, really good job of, of, of passing off twists and, and doing the things that make their job really, really difficult. You guys have had some uh, different receivers that have been out, and you know, what are you seeing at the at the two man and nine man here right now? Say so again, the two man and and the nine man boundary. And the nine man, uh, you know, so Cornell's had to play pretty much all those positions. You know, Specs had to play all those positions. EJ, you know, and, and a Joe have been, but they're young guys. Obviously, Joe just getting here, uh, so everything is still kind of spinning in his head. EJ, you're starting to see. Uh, we, we know how athletic he is and, and, and the acrobatic catches, but you're starting to see him be a little bit more consistent. So you know, that's kind of how we're rolling. But every day it's a different lineup. And so that's a credit to, to Coach Christian having those guys ready uh, to play multiple positions. And then also just the fact that we're able to go out and execute uh, and score points in a, in a scrimmage situation with this, the, the, the constant mix them of receivers. You know, those guys, you could tell they put in some work, you know, over the summer, but all those guys are embracing their opportunity. And, and, uh, and again, we'll hopefully get the other guys out of protocol soon, but it's really been good for Cornell uh, getting some boundary work at the nine man, also getting some two work. Uh, it's also been good for EJ uh, to play two and nine, then also been good for Spec to play all three. Coach Trevor Groves, utigers.com here. Uh, Coach Sweeney, I was just in that room and he just compared. Uh, uh, your two freshman running backs, Bowman and Pace, to the original Thunder and Lightning. Have you already <laughs> talked about how they performed today? Uh, just a little bit. Uh, uh, again, you know, uh, 
a little bit tougher in, in a, in a non-controlled uh, scrimmage when everything is, is, is available to them, but got them reps with, uh, with, the, with the second group uh, as well. And both of them, you know, showed some flashes. Uh, you saw Bowman have a chance to put his, put his foot in the ground. And what I wanted to see was in a live situation, how he was going to run between the tackles. And uh, he, made, he put his foot in the ground and he, and he drove his nose up in there, which was good. And then you saw him, you know, hit the, hit the second level a couple of times. And, and uh, it's just a matter of time before he breaks one. You know, Kobe, you know, Kobe just continues to show his consistency. I mean, he's a big guy, but he's very, very smooth. That's probably why he gets some of the comparisons to a, to a James Davis. Uh, very, very soft hands. Um, you know, those guys are, are continuing to do good, continuing to progress. I'm excited to look at the film uh, to see exactly how they were doing. But I thought overall we ran the ball well. Uh, and they had a couple of plays where, uh, where they were in there to show some flashes. Anything else for Coach Elliott? Uh, Trevor, again, Coach. Um, Coach Sweeney has, has been has had really good things to say about uh, Brandon Spector. Um, how would you compare him to uh, to Hunter Renfro at that position? You know, it looks he, he looks a lot like him in that thirteen, uh, but he's he's bigger. Uh, you know, he's bigger, uh, just as quick, if not quicker, you know, at his size. I mean, Specs going to be, you know, he's looking me in the eye. He might be a little bit taller than me, so he's pushing that six two range. Uh, very very natural ball skills. Um, just has a knack for the receiver. So he looks uh, very similar to Hunter. Um, you know, not quite as savvy yet just because he doesn't have the experience, but I think he's going to have, you know, you know, more top end speed and he has the same amount of, of, of short area quickness. And as we can get, you know, the guys back from protocol and kind of get him settled into one or two of the spots you know, to let him really work on the details. Uh, but so far, man, he's shown, he's shown great flashes of quickness on some of the uh, concepts that we have in for him and then uh, him for that five man position. And then also, uh, you know, he's shown some speed, you know, he's caught some balls and ran away from some people. So very comparable, but he's a bigger, you know, faster and, uh, and, and probably equally as quick kind of guy yeah, as Hunter. How, how about uh, Cade Stewart at center, Coach? How's he doing? Now he's doing awesome. You know, he's, he's, doing, he's doing awesome. Uh, not really missing a beat. Uh, from what we had, you know, what we had in the past. He's played a lot of football, but but now he knows it's it's his turn. We we'll count on him from a leadership standpoint. Uh, he's always been a physical guy. He's always been a guy that can move people. Uh, so it's been it's been good, and, and he's been good for Putnam, you know, to his right, being able to communicate with him because he knows the guard position. Uh, and then you got Bockhorst to his left, uh, so he doesn't really have to necessarily tell Bockhorst anything because Bockhorst knows. I mean, Bockhorst probably one of the smartest football players we got. Uh, so it's really, really, really encouraging to see where where Kay Stewart is. Uh, we just got to continue to uh, just continue to to work uh, on the consistency and the cohesion. But but so far, man, those guys have done a great job. Um, you know, in my opinion, very, very comparable to to the guys that we had last year with all of their experience as well.